Have you heard the news? Multi-stream machine is open for enrollment for a limited time. If you're a product-based business owner who's ready to finally have a clear roadmap to build a sustainable and thriving business that supports itself and pays you the salary you dream of, then you're going to want to head to multistreammachine.com and check it out. All right, now let's jump into the episode. Welcome to the Product Boss Podcast, where we help product-based businesses grow their sales and improve their strategies. Hey, everyone. I want to introduce you to my co-host and biz bestie, Mina Kunlo-Sita, an Amazon guru that has built a multi-six-figure product-based business. And introducing the other half of the product boss, Jacqueline Snyder. She has helped launch and grow over 500 fashion apparel and accessory brands, even one of her own. And together, we share our inventory of secret weapons that will help you dig deep and do the work it takes. Are you ready? Let's build together. Hey, product boss, let's get you fired up. Let's show you and prove to you it can be done. Whether you're a maker, a manufacturer, or a retailer, you can grow your business how you want. Let's get you inspired about your business and how you want to build it. And we're here to help you. This week, we're going to be sharing stories every single day of small product-based business owners just like you. These are our students who have created their version of success and built the businesses that they wanted. We truly believe there is a path to profit for each one of us. And that means for you too. It looks different for every single one of us and every single one of us has our own way. We just do it together. We have lots of fun and we give you the right tools. So let's hear these stories from our students who have done it in their own way and who have had the support of the Product Boss community, tools, and education because we've done it together. We're excited to get you inspired too. So... Let's jump right in. All right. So Jess, let's talk about when you started Bella Vita Candles and sort of where you were before. Because this was your side hustle, wasn't it? This wasn't even a hustle. This was just (laughs) a hobby. And then the shelter in place hit and I'm like, we're going to sell these on Instagram. Because you were a therapist. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so she had to, you had to close your practice um, mm-hmm. because shelter in place happened and you ha- you were just what, as a hobby, you were just making candles. And yep. then, and then you're like, okay, now what? And so March 2020 happens. And so what did you sort of do? With, I love, everyone's been loving these stories about how everybody is, well, just the different stories, like the different paths to profit for all the product bosses, because everyone has a different place that they started. A lot of people, you know, had another business and it was a hobby or maybe it is even a side hustle. So let's go back to March of 2020. I know it's a little PTSD. So everyone breathe as we talk about mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. My eyes twitching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blacked out the whole year, clearly. So, okay. You had your practice and we'll start from there. Yeah. So my husband, and I could already see it coming because he also trains people from all around the world. So their gyms were shutting down. So we knew it was coming and we were both very nervous. And so we just started on Instagram in on March or in March, just selling in the DMs. And we were really hoping just to get a few wholesale orders to kind of ride it through because I still had to pay for my practice and our bills for our kids. And then um, people just started wanting to buy like one candle at a time. And yeah. Did you let friends know like how did you start to sell it first? Yeah. Because we can't all just jump on but, social yeah. media. Did you make candles before? You said it was a hobby though. Like what? Yeah, how we just you- were in, yeah, we like made it and we were just in a couple stores because they had asked us to be in it, but it was really nothing just for fun. Okay. And so you yeah. showed up, um, so you kind of just started showing up on social media and, and now you've been mm-hmm. on the podcast and her story about her giveaways and all the things that she did to grow was amazing. So we didn't really know you very well. You kind of started to sell wholesale. And if you are all new here back in March of 2020, when it was a shutdown and everybody was baking bread, Mina and I were literally where we are right now, building a course. Yeah. <laughs> I think our brain cells, brain power was pretty much the same level as it is now. Like we, you know, we, every, we were ready to get to work and it was a lot of people that 
felt we knew the we needed way. help. Yeah, mm-hmm. we knew that people shut down and we knew that we needed to help and figure out a way to get p- businesses online because a lot of people did not have their businesses online yet. And so they weren't sure um, if they should sell. It was mm-hmm. very mixed feelings during that time. So we made yeah. Survival Kit Course Bundle, which was like a bundle of courses that really helped people get online quickly in alternative ways. And I think that's right. That was your first um, kind of investment. Did your husband buy it one. for you? Yeah, he bought it because oh I couldn't God. like do He's it. coming back to yes. me. Yeah, I had another one. It was like a hundred dollars, and then that one I think was maybe two ninety seven or something. I can't yeah. remember. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. And he surprised me and got it. And then we did multi stream. Yeah. So you jumped in, I know, and then and then it was, there was a few of you that kind of decided together, like you had met in the community, and then you're all like, should we do this? Should we jump into multi stream machine and all that? So, um, so you did that. Was it the March? summer of twenty twenty? No, no. April. I think I it was like I think it was like August. Maybe. Oh yeah. Mm. We got um, into multi-stream. Okay. So just tell everyone, you know, sort of where you were back in 2020 and we'd love an update even on where you are today. Sure. So in 2020, we were basically selling out of the DMs and then through the courses and just binging your podcast like over and over, we got a website. And then after multi-stream that course, I think I went through it five to seven times, honestly, because like when you guys start bantering back and forth, you actually have so many ideas like email (laughs) headlines and marketing. I'm just like, oh my gosh. So I went through it a lot. Um, But then we got a website. And then within two months, so October, we had our first $30,000 month after multi-streamer. Oh Oh my gosh. Yep. That's insane. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And then in a matter of, I'm just nervous, a matter of three months, I think, then we were like six figures. So we, we like hit the, I think it was like 120 overall for 2020. Okay. So we have not, we haven't been updated in a while from you. So um, we knew that you were in the course and we knew that it did really well. So this is incredible. So we're kind of just as blown away as all of you. That's a whole lot of candles. I am super proud of you. (laughs) So from March of basically not even, it was a hobby. It wasn't even a side hustle. It was a hobby. And you're like, okay, we're going to do this. To October, you said you made 30,000 that month. Yep. To by the end of the year, 120 total. So that's, I can't do the math. Nine yeah. Minutes. So from March to the end, 12 minus guess. three is nine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nine, so, nine. <laughs> nine <Yeah. months. laughs> you ended up building a, and it was your first year of business. You ended up building yeah. a bigger business. Yeah. That's amazing. In a pandemic yep. and, you know, from not even having done it, you know, side hustle, you really jumped from zero to zero to a hundred, right? You know, because literally, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say to 100K. 60, but I was like, no, yeah. no. So, <laughs> so for people out there thinking, well, how did she do this? Like, how did she grow it? So when you were building your business last year in 2020, up until the end of the year, was it solely direct to customer? Were you doing wholesale? Like what other platforms did you do to sell? We did... I mean, now for 2021, we are completely just direct to customer. Um, We had a couple wholesale accounts, but it just stressed us out. And that's just not what we wanted. So we just cut that back so then we could fully control our workload. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're just direct to customer. Just direct to consumer. And is all your marketing basically social still like Instagram or are you... Yeah. So we're on Instagram. And then I started on Pinterest in 2021. We just had a pin go viral. So it's not even accurate if you look Congrats. at it. But we have like a million views now, but it was just... It hasn't resulted in any sales. It doesn't do anything, but it's just a vanity <laughs> Pinterest. number. But Pinterest yeah. is one of those yeah. things. It's like, we also are on Pinterest and we're like, we have no idea if this is doing anything, but we're there. It's not. <laughs> but just we're doing it. We're there. That's amazing. So... Yeah. um did you have you hired now? Like, because I know it was your family, kind yeah. of your kids helped you out and stuff like that. Do you have a team? So here's the thing that people actually can we skip forward to today? So this is it's yeah. September. So we're basically in October of last year, you were at 30,000. So you'd built it all the way up. So now let's just, it's about a year. Are you mm-hmm. open to sharing what your revenue is now? So all year, so once we got back, so I couldn't really set up the systems like module and because we were just full force. Like we were already pouring Christmas by the time I got into multi-stream. And so we waited until we took a break after Christmas and then we set up systems and planned out our entire year. 
And we put in like planned breaks. So we just got off of a six week break, but we take like months to six week breaks off. And we just got off. And last night, within about 25 minutes, we had a $10,000 event, no sale, just that's selling. It. No discount, right? No, no discount. discount. You mean, uh huh. So yeah, we do, you think, do you, um, do you have a team that runs it on the six weeks off or your customers are trained now that you go away for six weeks? They still buy, but we don't promote anything. So I mean, consistently month after month, it's, it's about non-candle seven. season too. You're talking summertime, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but even during that, it was between seven and ten grand a month, and then now we're ramping up into candle season. Yeah, That's so amazing. so you're gonna you're going to be a six figure business again this year. Do you mm-hmm. think you're gonna get to double like multi six? I uh, we actually we didn't really strive to grow this year. It was okay. just stabilizing and we knew smart like, lady to be it yeah um, right six, so that's well listen i mean for being in business for what a year and a half a year and a half yeah. she took six weeks off you know the, i love that because really when we talk about numbers when we talk about revenue goals and all of this it's really the the goal for all of us is to get you to whatever you see your life as so if you're living that life that you want then you have made it however you want it to make it and that's really what the goal is it's not you know that you have to 2x or you have to do this or that or whatever it's really about your life and your success so so proud of you because i remember when you first started it was your kids that they, you, tra- there was like Pavlov's, Pavlov's bell. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they would be like, ding. And they'd be like, oh my gosh, you got an order. Yes. And it was so exciting to hear because you were just on, just starting to feel like something was happening. And now mm-hmm. look at you. It's just incredible. Yeah. It's really amazing. And we really haven't grown that much. So we exploded in 2020. But I, I think it's important for everyone to know that like our email list is 300 people. And I think that, and I'm consistently on social media five days a week and, you know, offering the discount to sign up, but it's 300. I think we've added 20 this year. And then our text messaging list is 350. We've maybe added 200 people. I don't even know for followers, no, 800 people followers. But I mean, it's really about like we focus on really taking care of our customers. And Mm -hmm. like one thing that I really got from you guys was over delivering and delighting like all the time. And that's kind of what we do. So we don't have like, we moved away from that. So we now, that's okay. So we do more um, events where we go live in our Facebook group and we do trivia and stuff that way. So we nurture our warm audience instead of always going for the giveaways because that was actually just stressing me out more and more. <laughs> she went live twice a week or but like at the end of the week, she did giveaways every week, which grew her following. Because I remember, I think one of the very first messages we got for you, from you was a DM. We didn't know you yet. And you DM'd us and said, hey, you don't know me, but I think you had grown your Instagram and you had, I feel like it was like 3000 in sales or something like that. You messaged yeah. us and you just, you were like, I, I took your course and this is what happened. Mm-hmm. I think you thanked us, which thank you, by the way, for just being yeah. you. Um, and and we were like, this is amazing, especially during a pandemic with, you know, launching a candle company. So I think what's cool, and Amanda Lee's saying, I love how everyone has such different numbers and everyone gleans mm-hmm. from different points in the trainings because Amanda Lee is a student as well. Um, what I love and what I love you all to hear here is that what Mina and I are all about is that you build your dream life and your dream business. So everybody's dream looks different, right? Everyone's like goals. Right. I mean, look at behind the scenes. I just want to give some more numbers really quick. Okay. So good. Instagram, get this, Jacqueline, 5,822. Yeah. You can have email proof right 300 here. 300 people. Yeah. Tax 300 people. She has a six figure business and she took six weeks off. Like, does Multiple that not just times, like, right? blow your mind? I mean, it's like, yeah, can I come back <laughs> for you? Because I don't let her off. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Jack is wearing me down to the bone every minute. <laughs> um, but, but, and I think that's, and I and I actually really respect you for kind of choosing what's right for you and like that balance and that work-life balance and all that. And um, yeah, I just want everyone to see that because I think all the time people think that you need to have X amount of followers to be successful. You need X amount of people on your email list. You really just need to know what you're selling, 
and where you're going to sell it and how you're going to sell it, right? Like, so you've always worked on your visibility, even with, you know, about 5,000 people on Instagram, you were able to grow a six figure business in a year, basically. By Um, over delighting, you know, it's like that concept of a thousand true fans. I mean, they really, I bet you anything, your existing return customer rate is probably super high. Do you know what it is? We, um, so we wanted to treat our like return customers and it was, we had hundreds because we were trying to send out a gift basket. It was like $50 worth of stuff just to randomly delight them. And we wanted to do every single one that had five or more orders. And we ended up having to do a second different thing to ship them because we had over 200. We were just like, oh my gosh. So I think it's, I would, for us, it's like a hundred true fans and they're just like family and we just really love them. (laughs) They're just great to us. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I mean, can't it just goes to show you that can't I mean, there's a candle company for everybody, you know, and I bet they love candles too. They probably love you as well. And they probably buy other candles too, I'm sure. But it just I love that story because it's it really shows that there is room at the top for all of us. There's reasons why people buy this candle and that candle. And um, it's just amazing because you I mean, it's probably from being a therapist that you're really attuned to what you wanted you know, and you went crystal clear for that target, you know? So, and then just being with your family and involving them and doing it during the pandemic. I mean, the rest of us were probably like super frazzled, but you know, you've always been very even keeled anytime we talk to you. (laughs) Well, I was frazzled. That's why we had to plan in the breaks like all year long, just because I did not. So we work really hard to live a very like, like we're retired now lifestyle. And so that's why we have those breaks. And then we are done, I think, December 10th, and we'll take a two month off break. Do you still have your practice? Yep. You are. Yeah, that actually doing. ramped up. It was just crazy. It's just been because <laughs> everyone lot. was home with their spouses. <laughs> yes, that was not uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> it could go one of two ways and you're locked at home with your spouses. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that. But all right. So here's something I want to say, okay? And and let me know in the comments if you feel this way. Um because I think Jess could definitely speak to this too, is there's a fear of, we talked about this earlier in the week, but there's a fear of success, right? The fear of if I do well, I'll get overwhelmed. I won't be able to keep up. I won't be able to do things. So let me know if you have that fear, like that fear of success, because it's going to be overwhelming. You don't think you can handle it. Because Jess, you're a maker, right? Do you, you all pour these candles? We can watch you yep. do all the reels, doing all the things. Every single one, yeah. <laughs> so do you have anyone helping you make or do anything right now? Ryan, my husband. And okay. then we have we have stay-at-home moms that do piecework. So they'll just like get a box of tins where they have to wipe them, uh, label them, and just make sure they're all perfect. And then okay, they bring so them back. You, so you're able to kind of hire out, right? You're hiring, you know, some some help. You're helping other people contribute to their families. So I guess I'd love for you to speak to everyone because they're saying absolutely yes, they do have this fear of success. There's a lot of makers, especially because we see this beautiful wall of candles behind you that you've done all of them with you and your husband. Um, What would you say to that? Like in terms of that growth, because it sounds like you've been able to kind of put your foot on the gas pedal and then ease off, put your foot on the gas pedal and ease off. So I'd love for you to speak to that. Well, so after multi-stream, you know, we just tried really hard to focus on the customers, even though there was so much, like, I feel like we could be multi-six if we would have did all the streams, but we just focused on the customers. And then we were, um, approached by Nordstrom's to have a pop-up there in the Mall of America. And um, we were getting courted by a team that wanted to introduce us to stores like Anthropology and then just some other bigger things. And we were right on the, the cusp of saying yes. And I just, the more, the closer the deadline came, I was physically getting sick. So I feel like your gut will tell you when it's like, it's too much. And for our slow-paced lifestyle, being in a place like Nordstrom's, which wasn't for us. So Mm -hmm. So you're saying though that you were able to grow though to a six-figure business, but I mean, yeah, sure. We all have big deadlines. Yeah. I I said no to like bigger wholesale accounts. Yeah. You were able to say no, but you also have six figures without that, right? So you were pouring Mm -hmm. a lot of candles (laughs) to get there. So in terms of the... Because you by everyone's terms, you're a successful business. So you have been able to gauge that for yourself and have success, but not be 
I think what people think is they'll never leave their houses again and they'll be locked to their like studios or their work rooms. Mm -hmm. But you've even taken parts of your business that you can outsource and get actual help, right? Yeah. Yeah. I I think what I'm saying is, is like, I think if you follow your gut, your intuition will tell you when it's too much. Like if you're going too fast, maybe say no to some things like, and then you will be able to handle it. So even yeah. though you fear that it will get so big that you won't be able to manage everything, even if you get there and you decide, wait, this is too much, then throttle back. You don't have to keep doing whatever's overwhelming you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. You know, I think that people, they have this vision of success that it, it, it has to look frazzled or it has to look a certain way. And mm-hmm. there are people that probably would have said yes to Nordstrom. But even that, I mean, there's people that are capable of that without getting overwhelmed. So I love that there everybody has their own version and definition of what success looks like to them. And I think mm-hmm. that when you're moving forward, the clearer you are, then it's easier in a way because you're an entrepreneur, you can figure it out. So you can decide yes to this, no to this, yes to this, no to this. Um, And I think as business owners, you know, when you're a crafter or you're a hobbyist or you're, you know, you just start doing it, you think that it controls you, but really you're the boss of your business. The boss, the business is not the boss of you, you know? So you really have to kind of make those decisions and really align it to what you want. We always say that, you know, your business is the tool to your dream life. You've really shown that because you've really, I mean, you, you've just done it in like the slow lane, the fast lane. I mean, whatever lane you've really wanted to do. She gets to choose which lane she wants to drive And in. who is on <laughs> that journey with her, you know? Her kids and her husband. Yeah. And her customers. So it just looks different for everybody on this, you know, their own version of, you know, their own path to profit. This is incredible because, you know, you're direct to customer, which is, you know, by far the most profit you can make because of not having to split it or anything like that. You really have built a business that kind of exemplifies what you want and who you are. And, and then you're still making the revenue that you want. It's just incredible. Thank you. Thank you. We learned a lot from you. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, you know, and here's the thing, everyone. So, she, so her and her family, they went, you know, they, they built this business kind of out of necessity at yeah. first, right? To generate cash, to pay the bills and buy the food and live life, well, she right? She said to p- feed my kids. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, you know, and mm-hmm. we talked about that the other day, like the core, the core parts of just like feeling safe, right? The feeling safe and like the the what is it on? Um, Safe and happy. Oh, oh yeah. uh, Maslow's hierarchy. Yes. Thank you. Uh, to become in one in the brains. Mina's minority. <laughs> min- minority. Mina's minor in... <laughs> minority. <laughs> in... Somewhere. Yeah. So I have somewhere. a minor in psychology <laughs> in my... And then I have an advertising degree. So <laughs> she's got a lot of degrees. So, um, so the idea there then is that, you know, you, you met your basic needs and then you were able to kind of choose what, you know, what you wanted to do. But where I wanted to get to in this was that you were growing and you scaled and you grew and you built this customer base and you figured out a lot of things. And then what I think is really interesting is that when the new year hit, that your choice wasn't like, let's go. Cause we definitely, I mean, if you've been around us, we like money. I hope all of you yeah. like money. So yeah. we like to say like, we like to set good, better, best goals. And a lot of that is revenue driven. Cause I know so many of you are driven by revenue. You want your business to get to a place. Well, just got her business to a place. And then it sounds like you were like, okay, we built this, but we kind of built this on this sort of shaky platform, right? Like you were like, mm-hmm. okay, we have to do something with systems. And so I think it's really interesting that you actually came back into multi-stream machine, which People do. We just had a call with Annika the other night where she's like, now she's ready to go dig back in for something else. Um, so that you went back in and you were like, okay, now we have to stabilize. We have to work on our systems. And and so what did you do for your systems? Like, what was the big thing that you're like, Ooh, let's overhaul this or let's work on this? Well, I had, I wrote down like the system of operating procedures for just making everything, um, just having inventory for all the boxes. And so I hated that scrambling feeling. But I also made for the whole 12 months a pour schedule. So then I knew when we needed to start pouring for the next collection, when I'd have to start marketing for that collection, when our break was going to be. Um, and then by April, we had everything ordered, labels, wax, fragrance oils, wicks, 
for Christmas. So we were already set in April. So we've it's like she just, just spoke there. a love language to you. It's like I you know. read me now love poem. Yes, I know. I love that. <laughs> it really is like when you think about production, production and inventory are essentially the same thing. When you're a maker, you're making your inventory. And that's really what stops a lot of people or where they get overwhelmed because they don't understand that that inventory has to come from somewhere and they're mm-hmm. making it to order a lot of times. So it's like, that's the overwhelming part is that they're like, oh, I don't know what to put on my shelves. I don't have anything on my shelves until the order comes in. So I love mm-hmm. that you really thought about, okay, my raw goods, I'm going to order these. I'm going to put that against my marketing plan of when that's coming up. It's just so Mm -hmm. smart. And then you also um, building in breaks, which is literally my love language too. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, all of this. Like I'm going to leave the product box and go on over to Bella Vita Candles. (laughs) Sounds like it's nice and chill over here. She's like, six week breaks. (laughs) They're organized. (laughs) She feeds her kids. They have systems. They go by a calendar. (laughs) Hey, product boss. We all know that building a product-based business isn't easy, is it? But here's the truth. It doesn't have to be so hard. In fact, when you have the right systems and support in place, you can skyrocket your sales and finally create the product business that fits your life and lifestyle. That's why we're so excited to announce that Multistream Machine is officially open for enrollment for a limited time. We've taken our 20 years of experience in building product-based businesses, including our own, which have generated millions and created a completely turnkey system to help you scale your business and create the revenue you've dreamed of. If you're a product-based business owner who's ready to build a sustainable and thriving business that can support itself and pay you the salary you dream of. Or get more customers to easily find you and buy from you without spinning your wheels while stuck on social media and spending money on paid ads. Have a clear roadmap that shows you exactly how to create a plan and sell more so you can stop guessing and start knowing. Then you're going to want to head to multistreammachine.com and check it out. You can go through the course at your own pace. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. And our thousands of alumni can tell you there's no other course for product-based businesses like it. So friends, we'll see you in there. Does anyone have questions for Jess? I know that this is a different story than those that we've shared throughout this week. And I think it's a really interesting story. The very cool thing for all of you to know in Multistream Machine is that you get it all when you sign up. So... um, when you sign up, you get access to all the modules. You have access to them forever and instant access. You can Netflix and binge. But when we teach you, and next Friday, we're going to teach you how to create your path to profit, you can really decide what works for you. What do you want to focus on? So it sounds like what you did is you really focus on social media, probably a little bit of systems at first. Um, mm-hmm. Your website, or what was the first stuff you yeah. jumped into? Website? Yeah, the website. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. focused on that and you kind of got it going. And really you have a superpower for sales and connection. So there's, there's certain things that you're all going to realize that you have your own superpower. Like we each have our own cape and we each have our own superpower. And this worked really well for Jess. Like she could get online. She could just talk effortlessly to people. And they were like, yes, I'd like to buy what you're selling. So that really worked for her. And then for example, like someone said, Oh, you've just kind of jumped into one sales channel, right? You were going direct to customer, Mm -hmm. but you were also selling to wholesale. And then you chose to stop selling wholesale. Um, yeah. And then you jump back into system. So I guess moving forward, and I know you're coming out of a break and, and all that, but is there anything that you think you're going to want to try or get into that maybe you'll go back into multi-stream machine and learn about that you're kind of considering? Um, you're like, I'm cool. I'm co- <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, this we're really gearing up for really delighting our customers for the holidays. Like we have a lot of events, like when you prepare for the holidays, like we're doing um, a live bingo night, but we're going to actually mail them uh, like a candle where we're all going to have the same scents, like funky glasses, bingo card, candy. And then... Are they paying for that? Do they no. pay for it? Or- no. This is the stuff that like... And then like with our sale, not our sale, but our event last night. So we, I said, you get a swag bag with every order. Like I don't care if you order a tin or like one person did $600, like you get a swag bag. And and so, <laughs> I know, I know. And so, but like we have a hundred and I was planning on like 36 orders. So I had swag bags already and we have 116 to do. So our floor is just covered with bags. 
You're like, um, I took a six week, six week break. And if you're just coming in now, um, she took a six week break off because that was something you built into your schedule. She came back, did an event yesterday and, um, without discounting her product and had a $10,000 event, which is mind blowing. That is yeah, we were so blown amazing. away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, we the bingo night, so if they order from you, then they get the swag bag and then, then you all show up and just like have fun together. Is that sort of... Yeah. So in with the bingo thing, that's a separate thing. And that will be for Christmas bingo. And because we did Christmas in July and we did bingo and they loved it. And then I'm like, we should do it where we actually send you a gift box with a bingo card and we could all have the same scented candle and a shared experience. And so they'll just sign up um, to get it. And then we'll ship them out at a certain date that's in the calendar. And then we'll go live in our group and play together. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> so I love that. I mean, listening to your story, right? A lot of times what we talk about, Jacqueline, and I would talk about stabilize and then scale, stabilize and then scale, right? So really what you did was you scaled. I mean, it was crazy. You said you're overwhelmed, mm-hmm. you know, all the things. And then come the new year, you stabilize, you jumped into systems. And the and I love that you had it like from the get-go $10,000 sale from the break because mm-hmm. you can handle that sort of thing now because you stabilize. So now it just keeps going. It's cyclical. You know, you just keep going round and round on it and you just Mm -hmm. keep going forward how you want to. And then you go deep instead of wide. This is what Jess is really good at. She's deep in the relationships, really building that rapport, building that bond with her customers. Because we say this all the time that your customers are nine times more likely to buy if they've been existing customers. And if you blow them away, it's probably way, way more of a percentage, you know, like mm-hmm. because of the of the human experience, you know, we become connected, become, you're a loyal customer, a raving fan, you know? And so that's really what what she's built around her and what her brand is really a part of. So there, it took a while to get to that point, you know? Mm-hmm. I think um, somebody asked me about re- what the future of retail in New York City, because there's so many spots are empty and they're like, do you think retail will come back? And I said, I think it will, but I think all of retail is going to be a different type of thing. And I think it's going to be a hybrid of experience and retail. So mm-hmm. when we think about the places we go now, what's the experience we're having? I mean, hands up if you love Target because you could have a Starbucks and walk around and mm-hmm. shop, right? There's an mm-hmm. experience. Right? <laughs> I have to wear masks. I'm like, ah, at least I'm saving money not going to Target. But um, <laughs> But the the idea of the experience. Now that's just like a very small thing of what I'm saying. But um, you know, there's going to be Instagrammable walls. There's going to be um, things that you can do that are there's virtual reality. There's artificial intelligence. There's going to be things that you can customize when you're in the store. Maybe you're able to watch or experience the making of stuff. It's very much going to be hybrid. And so what I think is really cool about you and the way that you have grown your business is one, I think you're a marketing genius. Um, it must be your relationship to like, I don't know, there's something about you, your superpowers, like also understanding human nature and sort of what delights and surprises. Cause you've been very good at finding that very, alternative ways, right? We would never mm-hmm. think a candle company is going to send us a bingo kit, for example. But you're creating this idea, this experience for mm-hmm. your customers online that creates community yeah. without, over candles, which a lot of you are like, well, it's they just sell candles. How is there a community around that? Well, well you actually, know what it is, right? What? So it's because she's a therapist. She's learned how to evoke emotion through her products. So the candle scent is the the you know the smell the senses so she's tweaked into all their senses and she evokes a certain emotion so she's basically created Pavlov's bell with her <laughs> with her customer I haven't tried like she I'm did not her children so when they, people who are buying from her right now are like did you train me to do this <laughs> I know I'm like some of the raving fans are product bosses so I'm like I am no. not doing this on purpose. <laughs> This is just our like gathering of information about you. You're just literally such an authentic, genuine person that it's it really does take like the the brands that I've really seen do really well are the ones that have been able to uh, attach to you in some sort of way. That's why people become obsessed, you know. And And so it's like people hide behind their products. And listen, not everyone's going to be like you and have the same sort of capabilities that you have, and and you can't duplicate each other, right? Um, Yeah, but. But you're just a very good example of you sell candles, and so many people are like well, I just sell candles. But mm-hmm. you've personified the candles, you've gamified the candles, you've, you've attached a memory to it, probably a mm-hmm. good memory of having fun and bonding community to each around other. it. 
just, you know, yeah, just so many things that you've done with your business. That is why you're so successful and why you have such a high return rate of customers. And then when they smell jasmine, they're like, I need to buy some more candles. It's more like tobacco <laughs> scents. And I, I ended up giving my mom all the candles. She's like, these smell so good. Cause I was in LA when I ordered all the candles from you last year. Um, but so yeah, they're just such good scents and they're, and they're warm and earthy. A lot of them too. So mm-hmm. we have a lot of questions for you. People okay. are really interested in things. So here's the first one. When you were faced with the Nordstrom opportunity, did you have the presence of mind to say, let me think about it? Or did you say yes and then reconsider? No, we we thought about it. Yeah. So we had, I think it was about three weeks of conversations. And then when it came to, it was a few days before, like I was literally throwing up. So I just knew like my gut is really strong. And I was just like, this isn't our path. So... And my husband just said, like, I trust you. So we just didn't, didn't go there. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, when you're having a visceral reaction, you know, so it's, you probably felt all out of alignment. I did. (laughs) And I'm glad you were able to tune into that. So, um, Kristen's asking for tips for branding. It's kind of a big general question, but any tips that you've kind of cued into for yours? We are super big on giving. And so when people think of Bella Vida, we want them to think of being super generous and nice to people. And so we even created, my husband created um, the Helping People Projects. We have our own little like pay it forward program. And so like with last night's sales, we have $500 going to a family that needs back to school supplies. It's just a single mom that doesn't have anything. So we just, we do that. And we constantly talk about giving away stuff, but I don't know, just being super generous. I guess I want people, it's just my character in in general is that. So I think your top three values of your brand, just focus on saying that over and over and over. So just figure those three things out. Yeah. And I feel like your brand probably even in itself is more about one-on-one relationships versus Mm -hmm. the bigger that, you know, big being in Nordstrom, for example, right? Because you're, you're helping the, that single mom, but you know, it's, it's, it's literally, that's like a practically a one-on-one relationship you know? Mm -hmm. So, so that's wonderful. Just that, that you do it in a small scope too. the impact. Um, okay. So there's a lot of questions about email funny enough because you only have 300 email subscribers. So let's just dig into that a bit. So 300 email subscribers, do you send emails? What do you, what do you do with your email list? Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of, so we brought on an assistant. So right when we were, we were talking about, us coming on to the mastermind, but like, I was like, I don't know if we should do that to go or we should stabilize. And so we ended up bringing on like a super talented assistant. And so she's built out a bunch of flows. And so we have a ton of different flows, (laughs) but yeah, we send out emails. We have like a welcome series, abandoned cart. One that's even if they didn't abandon their cart, they just were like browsing, like a browsing sequence. One that if you signed up, but you never purchased, then we offer you a free tin after like 90 days or something. A win back. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, we have a lot of different, I think there's probably six to 10 like flows that we have. And then oh gosh, I love this because some people are like, I only have 300 people. I'm not emailing out right now. And you look oh, yeah, at you, email. like, you know, you literally are like, Hyper focusing on giving them so much value, being such over the you know delightful customer service. That's fantastic. Yeah, like and then every week, like I'll write a blog post and then I'll do an email about that. So, like last three things you can do, like as summer is winding down, or tips to get organized for back to school. So just stuff that's not all candles because we talk a lot about happiness, like in our group, um, like the Facebook group. And so, yeah. Do you make money in your emails? Yeah. Yep. Do people buy from yeah, when we're Well, when we're in like selling mode. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The because text messaging is crazy. Everybody should and, be doing that. And that's only 300 people too, right? 350. Yeah. 350. How, what, what app do you use? Like what, um, well, what do you post use? Okay. Mm-hmm. And then do you have that as an opt-in? So like when they land on your website, they opt in for text messaging or how do you get people on your text list? Yep. We do that. Or like this event that we had is exclusive. And so they had to text a code word um, in order to sign up for it. And then, so our website is locked down right now until eight o'clock tonight. And then anyone that shopped like in the last 24 hours, they had to be on our text messaging list to get the passcode to get into shop exclusively. That's another thing we do. 
you've really taken action the way that you wanted to. You've really shown that it does take, you know, responsibility for your results. We've really been talking about that lately of, you know, because people, when they are scared of success, it's like if you if the result is what you imagined it to be, then you aren't scared of it because the success is what you wanted, you know? Mm -hmm. So if, yep. even if it's like, you know, a business that's, you know, takes months off, I mean, that would, that seems like a luxury to me, you know, and <laughs> all of those. So uh, somebody's like, clearly Jacqueline needs to sign up for a multi-street machine. <laughs> 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 you know, you know, you know, I, I don't actually have the best summary. So, um, we were just talking about how I have a neighbor and her name is Lauren and her kid's name is Soren. And I was like, thank you for making that so easy for me to remember <laughs> because like, my memory is not good. Um, po so, <laughs> you said postscript is what you use. Yeah. Okay. Postscript. Everyone's like writing their own version of it. Um, down here it's Friday. Yes. Thank you, Brooke. You know us. Yeah. And it's Friday. Yeah. I mean, any, any parting words you want to leave everyone with or anything else you want to kind of add that we didn't, we didn't get to? I think if you, so our community in New Prague is extremely supportive of us. So if you have a way to have a very cheap product, so I know a lot of candle companies follow you because you always use us as examples. <laughs> but if, so like, if you have a very cheap product that you can give somebody a taste or introduce, we did, we're going to do it like a lot more this year. We did You've Been Elfed bags um, in neighborhoods all over our town. And so they would open up a candle and they would read about who we are. We would, you know, let them know where they could shop. And then just like, I would give them something like an experience that they could have with their family. So like for the summer, we sent out a bunch of people, um, a bucket list kit. So they had popsicle sticks, a felt pen, ideas for a bucket list, and they could make it with their family. You could do something like that for Christmas, that like a recipe they could try together or something. And they'll remember you for that. Like a lot. And it's so, it's such cheap advertising. And then I swear our, our community is just incredible. Do you just go up to doors and leave it at a doorstep? Yeah. I know, I know that I did not teach that in multi-stream machine. I just have to put that yeah. out there. Oh yeah. gosh. No, she's a marketing. Over the lighting. So, yeah, yeah, we did that. And then mm -hmm. it was funny because we have a really popular happenings page. And then, so I put on there like, Hey, if you see a gray Jeep, it's dark out. Like we're not robbing you. Um, you know, <laughs> we're, just, we're just sprinkling these all over town. Well, then they went on there and we had over 400 comments that night of people like taking selfies with their bag. Like we got one, we got one. Oh, we're oh from order. God. Yeah. So that's, I would definitely do that if you're a small business. I just think it's such a good way to get right to them. Oh I gosh. like that. Let's add such that to Such a feel good thing. Talking about yeah, it. Mm -hmm. Like the experience, because next week we're really going to dig into getting you all, you know, in the holiday mood, holiday ready, and really thinking about how you're going to be front facing for your customers and building your promotions. And I love, I love this because when you lean into local, which is something actually we did teach. I remember this part. Yeah, in the survival kit. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Do you remember that? Maybe that's, that's what I did. <laughs> But we taught about leaning into local because for any of you, all of you that are out there thinking, I don't have enough sales. I want more sales. I think so many times we try and reach all the people far away through our devices. Instagram, we want the algorithm to work. I mean, if you've been following us on Instagram, I'm trying to get the algorithm to work in our favor. Like, it's an obsession that's just like out of control right now. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> so it's me over there on Instagram. But you know, there's, there's the algorithm. And then there's... um you know, there's all the ways of trying to reach people, but it's really hard if you don't have a budget for paid advertising, right? It's really hard sometimes to like build... A lot of you are asking, how did she build her list? I mean, she only has 300 uh, subscribers, but has a six-figure business. So she has found another way to kind of create momentum in her business. And one of the very first things you can do is she said, well, at first there was, you know, friends and family, you said. Then you went really deep into local in the way of just being known in your town. You all, your neighbors probably... I don't know how many of you... Do your neighbors know you all have product-based businesses out of your house? I mean, it's nope. like, my neighbors don't even know I live here. <laughs> really don't love this conversation. No. <laughs> We're rolling this back into the beginning of the neighbor conversation. <laughs> but, but, but she's leaning into local in the way of like, I love the gifting idea. 
Um, yeah. In Survival Kit Course Bundle, we talked about even like getting onto the Nextdoor app or into Facebook groups, and letting people know you exist. When a local shop had to close down, they're like, hey, we are here. We had to shut down. We will bring things to your house. So while you can gift, you can also think about like, how can you be helpful? Because what I want you all to remember is that um, there are going to be shortages. This we already are. Are you having candle, like container issue shortages? For you, Jess, or are you good? No, no you ordered back in April. April. Forget this. Again, Mina's love language. <laughs> a sweet whisper. I mean, in her ear. I'm going to say no, she does not have those issues. Other people are having shortages because <laughs> it is not pre planned, like Jess. Um, but there's going to be shortages. So, how can you, how will you show up for customers? Right. And I, um, so yeah, even if you have a no soliciting policy in your association, that's okay. So, don't go, you know, drop free product on their, on their thing, but let people know you're there you know, let people know like, Hey, um, Mm -hmm. teacher appreciation, like these teachers are all going back to school. Um, you know, first line health responders, you can drop things off at like your local hospital. I know Brooke would be happy. She usually goes into like the, um, the, the gift list for kids that are in the hospital. So whenever she's traveling, she actually on wish list for, um, you know, children's hospitals. And so when she gets her profits, she actually contributes back. They used to, her kids used to go shopping for it, but now with COVID, they haven't been able to do it. So, but people will get to know you and your business in ways that are real, true relationship. You know, Adriana is like, there's 35,000 people. Adriana, we're neighbors and there's a Maplewood person on here. I mean, there are plenty of people and there's little towns, right? So I just want you all to just continue to think when you're feeling kind of hopeless or helpless, or you're not sure what to do, Think about Jess and how she had to physically shut down her her career job and had to mm-hmm. figure out what to do. And she created personal relationships, whether it was through devices like we all did last year because we couldn't see each other physically. And then she was able to create that like physical connection or that tangible connect- connection. Mm-hmm. I've got uh, Amber is asking Laura if she could set a table outside her home. Oh, I thought it was like asking her. So yeah. And someone else said, wow, a six figure business, only 300 subscribers. She's just incredible. So yeah. follow yeah. Jess, become a buyer of her, of her candles, become a repeat buyer of her candles. I just thank you so much for being on with us. Thanks for letting me. And thank you for your courses. Like we, I'm just so happy we found you. I think the second week we were on Instagram and I just, I'm so grateful for you guys. Well, we're and then for really you. quick too, your husband, if I remember correctly, he hasn't always worked with you, right? Or did he? No, no, no. He's a trainer? He, yeah, he's a trainer for online. No, he didn't. He came on, like he's full-time now with me, but he can't. he had to come on for the holidays. Yeah, so... That was something we didn't mention. So 300 email subscribers, 350 tech subscribers, took six weeks off, Six figure business, and your husband is now your partner in this. Yep. You know, which he wasn't before. So you've done a, a it's been a, a, a crazy journey. So that's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, hey, product boss. We all know that building a product based business isn't easy, is it? But here's the truth it doesn't have to be so hard. In fact, when you have the right systems and support in place, you can skyrocket your sales and finally create the product business that fits your life and lifestyle. That's why we're so excited to announce that Multistream Machine is officially open for enrollment for a limited time. We've taken our 20 years of experience in building product-based businesses, including our own, which have generated millions and created a completely turnkey system to help you scale your business and create the revenue you've dreamed of. If you're a product-based business owner who's ready to build a sustainable and thriving business that can support itself and pay you the salary you dream of, Or get more customers to easily find you and buy from you without spinning your wheels while stuck on social media and spending money on paid ads. Have a clear roadmap that shows you exactly how to create a plan and sell more so you can stop guessing and start knowing. Then you're going to want to head to multistreammachine.com and check it out. You can go through the course at your own pace. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. And our thousands of alumni can tell you there's no other course for product-based businesses like it. So friends, we'll see you in there. Thank you for being here and listening all the way through the Product Boss Podcast. If you love our show and it has helped you in any way in your business, would you mind doing two things for us? 
subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode and leave us a review. Reviews help other product entrepreneurs know that this is the place to be to grow their businesses and realize that they're not alone. And we know that you all know that a five-star and honest review helps you sell more products to more people. So you know that your reviews help us reach more listeners around the world. Remember, what we give is what we receive. And we are all about helping each other in the Product Boss community. We are all in this together. We would be so appreciative of you if you could take the time right now to subscribe, leave a review, and even share this episode on social or someone you know so we can impact more lives. And remember, subscribing means that you will get notified each time we release a new episode so you never miss a thing. You have helped us grow and climb into the top 10 of all marketing podcasts and together we can keep climbing. Thank you, friends. And remember, there is room at the top for all of us. Thank you.